So here is our engine. Previously moved in that other video. If you haven't seen that other video, go check it out on our channel. Pretty much all we're going to do is strip it down today, do head gaskets on it, time belt, water pump, give it a general freshen up to make sure it's right to put in the Brumby so it is reliable. First things first, we'll get the timing cover off it and set the timing up so we can remove the heads. Pretty much you just got to line the lines up on the cams to the lines up on the heads. It is very easy. I normally just use a yellow texture to make it a bit more visible and easier to see if they're lined up or not. All your time belt kits will come with instructions on where the time marks are because some engines are a nightmare to figure out what are the actual time marks. Repco time belt kits are pretty good. Don't use their brake pads though, they are fucking shit. So on all EJ engines that are manual, they normally have a little cover that runs across where my fingers are there. And what that does is when you toast start a Subaru that's manual, when they start or fire, if they backfire in that, they will jump teeth on the time belt. They can actually throw the belt off, so there's normally a little metal guard there to stop the belt from being able to fall off. But if you don't set them up correctly they will wear the time belt out so I'm assuming that the person that done this belt last time just didn't know how to set it up or just couldn't be bothered so they didn't put it back on. So these are probably one of the simplest engines to ever work on. This video is sped up but it took under 20 minutes to get the heads off it. You don't have to pull cams, rocker arms, anything out to actually get to the head bolts. The second the rocker covers come off it, you can pretty much have the head off it straight away. So there we have the world's most muddy, disgusting EJ block. It looks like they were just filling this up with water out of a horse trough. It probably explains the horrific filler cap on it. As you can see there where my hands are, those little ports there are where the oil goes through the block to the heads. Now that is why these engines are known for leaking out of the head gaskets. Just because the coolant and oil always sit in it, and you got to remember they are horizontally opposed, so there's always oil sitting there. Whereas in an inline or V engine, oil and coolant will, pretty much gravity will force them back down, whereas gravity is pushing them out of the head gasket. So this was very surprising, the pistons did not have much carbon on the tops. Very common occurrence for EJs is they carbon up very badly and you normally have to run upper engine cleaner through them at servicing just to remove all that shit. So this was at, all the bores and that were very clean, it still had the original hone mark in it with no scoring in the bores. This is a crosshair pattern that you can see inside the bores. You can slightly see it on camera but it is quite difficult to see. There was a slight ridge at the top of the bores, but it wasn't anything to be worried about. That's just caused from where the piston goes to the top of it and then kicks back down. Now for the worst part of the job, just continuously cleaning every mating surface so you'll get a decent seal. Now I chose the method of using a cordless drill to clean the surfaces due to time. Also, you're not meant to do this on aluminium due to it being very soft. It will scratch it or gouge the surface and then you will get leaks. Now I didn't really worry too much about this because I wasn't pushing hard on it and I was also using a very light scour brush to do a light scour I'll say. No, like nearly the same things you use to wash your dishes. So it wasn't hard enough to destroy the aluminium and also the gasket will take up any 
small imperfections in the mating surface. I've done it quite a lot and never had a drama with any leaks or anything like that due to using it. Now you're probably thinking why your auntie's uncle's cousin's brother always said to machine aluminium heads and I did not. So as you can see in one of these clips, I put a straight edge across it and check the run out on the head to see how warped it is. This is done by just using a straight edge and putting a feeler gauge underneath it to see if it's still within spec. The heads on this was not warped at all and therefore I did not worry about getting the machine. Also the cost and time of getting the machine and we cannot do it locally in our town. So before you put the head gaskets on, make sure they are the right way around. I know some keys and that you can actually put the head gasket on backwards. Before I put the head gasket on, I like to use normally contact cleaner or something like that to actually clean both mating surfaces. If you use cheap shit brake clean, it will sometimes leave a greasy sort of residue on the surface and that can prevent getting a decent seal. You'll also note that I am reusing the head bolts. Now stretch bolts, you probably assume that you should throw them in the bin, but you can actually measure them and see if they are out of spec or not. Now I normally just use the rattle gun or impact to get the head bolts in till they touch. Do not tighten them up like this. There should be a torque procedure in with your head gasket kit or you can find them in the workshop manual. If you don't know how to use a torque wrench, you might as well just tighten them up with a rattle gun. Now the key is to actually tighten them up evenly, don't just go to one bolt and just torque the fuck out of it because that will warp the head. Note how you don't just reef on the torque wrench because this will give you an inaccurate reading and as I said you might as well just use a rattle gun to tighten them up. If that noise does not put shivers down your spine, I do not know what does. Now, since I do not have an angled fork wrench, I just draw a line at 90 degrees on the bolt. That way I can measure how far I go when I turn it to 90 degrees.
over the side, just send them with a rattle gun. And then we'll torque them to 1300 Newton meters. Probably actually use a torque wrench. So now we better pull this crappy old water pump out and put a new one in. Now, pretty much everything on this engine, we went to Revco on their website, they'll actually have what clearance items there are, and there were so many clearance items for an AJ. So I ended up getting these water pumps for 10 bucks each, so I bought a couple of them. They normally retail for about 200, so can't go wrong for that. And I think they even offer a three year warranty on them, and see how shit they are. So I didn't put a, a thermostat in it for the reason that I forgot to order one and I'm not going to put that old shit one back in it so when I order one I'll put one in it. Now we just got to set the time back up on it, put the belt on it. And hopefully the engine winds over correctly and has compression. Now for the worst part of setting up the tappets, pretty much you just got to do it. The, ex the exhaust valves will tighten up and your inlet valves will go looser. I just do this by winding the engine over till the rocker arms are on the rock. They're pretty much you can grab them and they're loose and then you can adjust them. This is a shit job, but this engine is the quietest one I reckon I've ever done. I don't know how the fuck I got them so good, but they're just spot on. Thanks Jaden for that heat gun. Yeah, I kind of forgot to um, film any more videos of the engine. Well, we'll do a big 0 to 100 time in the fucking bad uh, Brumby. Um, Speedo's out by about 10, so 90 k's an hour is 100. Note since his engine makes about 7,000 horsepower, I actually had to pedal it at the line because it started to light the tyres up. This is also flat foot. Yes, you'll never get that time back that you just watched a Brumby accelerate to 100 kilometers an hour. It took like 35 seconds. Hence why it is getting an EJ. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. I have to wait till it fucking draws right here. Yeah.